praise the Lord. The shepherds didn't, remind, didn't mind rejoicing, did they? The angels didn't mind rejoicing. We also should not mind rejoicing because Jesus Christ, our Lord, has come. Thank God for his blessings. I trust that you all had a wonderful Christmas. My, did it not get here in a hurry. And here we are moving on toward a new year. But we're glad you're here today. We're glad you're not stuck at the airport where they, many people had their flights canceled. We're, we're thankful that all of you didn't get a trip out of town for Christmas, that you're able to be here today. We're glad that everybody that's here today is well. That's also a good thing. We've got a lot to be thankful for, don't we? We appreciate your coming to the house of God on this last service of 2021. Can you believe that? 2021. We'll get back on regular schedule, the Lord willing, next Sunday. So we'll be sure and get ready to get geared up for our Sunday morning, Sunday evening, and Wednesday evening services beginning next Sunday. We are thankful for God's blessings this past year. He has kept us, and I pray that you'll join with me in prayer as we continue to pray daily for God's protective care around our congregation. Pray for his continued uh, blessings upon us that we'll not have any kind of outbreak in our congregation. We've been blessed, I'm telling you. When you talk to other churches, other preachers, uh, there's so many churches that continue to shut down week after week because of outbreaks that they have. And, and ever since the uh, former president declared the church is essential, we've been going full strong. And uh, God has blessed us. We've had a few people that's had to contend with sickness. But thank the Lord they all sur are survived and well. And we continue to pray for everyone to be well. Would you stand as we get ready to go to the Lord in prayer? Let's remember those today that are not able to be with us. We have requests for uh, Brother Mark Shu Brother Mark Mueller. His sister passed away this week. Continue to pray for him. We're so sorry, Brother Mark, for um, her passing. And also, my wife's brother, Jerry, fell, and he's not doing well. Pray God would touch him. Also, Sharon tells me that Rita and Grayson are both sick this morning. Pray for them, that God would touch them. Also, we have a request for Scott Spencer. His, his dad passed away from a heart attack. Pray that God would comfort them. We have several others that said they could not be here today. They're fighting colds and sinus issues. Pray that God would touch them and help them. Do you have any unspoken requests but lift of hand? Let's believe the Lord for these today and pray for the service, for God's anointing and his blessing. Our Father, we're so thankful to you today that we can call upon you at the time of need and at the time of trouble. We know that you're our healer and our deliverer. Lord, we cast every care upon you today because we know you care for us. Touch these that are sick and hurting and suffering, these that are in the home, the hospital, wherever they might be, that they would feel your healing virtue, your delivering power. We know, Lord, that with your stripes we are healed. We believe that today. We trust you, God, the manifestation of your glory and your power and your spirit, that the anointing be upon the word, upon the singers, the songs, upon everything that's said and done today. Let it bring glory and praise and honor to your name. We thank you for all these things, for it's in Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. Would you take a moment now and welcome one another? Matthew's Church of God, we're delighted to have you with us today.
Good morning. It is time to take up our tithes and offerings, and I am so excited about this part of our worship service. Anybody excited to give back to the Lord? Anybody excited to give back to the Lord today? His word says that God loves a cheerful giver. We see from the very beginning that God gives. He gave his only begotten son, and he doesn't require that much from us. And sometimes when we look at our bills, we can get discouraged, and we say, God, how are we going to make ends meet? But isn't he always provided? He's Jehovah Jireh, our provider, and you can never outgive God. I'm a testimony of that, that every time me and Ed may look at our finances and say, Lord, how are we going to do this? He always supplies our needs. He is a good, good father. And so today we want to give back to him because he loves a cheerful giver, not begrudgingly, not not hesitantly, but we say, here it is, God, because you gave it to me, so I'm giving it back to you. And I want to remind you today that this is the last opportunity for, for you to give in 2021, unless you want to pay your tithes online or drop it by the church this week. But let's go to the Lord in prayer and give him thanksgiving for all he's done for us this past year. Father, you are so good to us. And Lord, you don't require much. Lord, we bring our tithes and offerings into your storehouse so that there would be meat in your house, so that we can feast off the word of God. And so, Lord, we give back to you today everything that you've given us. You give us the strength to work. You give us the mind to work. So, Lord, everything that we have belongs to you anyway. So right now in this moment, we are laying up treasures in heaven by giving back to you. Thank you for blessing us. Thank you for being faithful, Lord. Thank you for providing for our needs. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. surrender to him. Come on, just bless him. Forget about everything else. Jesus, we worship you today. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, we need you today. Think about 
about where he's brought you from. morning.
Lord, just your voices I bless. I bless your name. I bless your name. I give you honor. Give you praise. You Can you say his name? Just say Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. Oh, we speak the name of Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. Oh, it's all about you today. Worship him. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. I give you praise. There's no other name. I'll just take a moment in his presence. Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus.
Lord this morning? Is he Lord of your life? We just celebrated Christmas. We celebrated something that should have changed our lives and it changed history. It's changed people's lives. But I'm here to tell you that it's not just a one-time thing. This celebration that we made yesterday and that we celebrate every year for the Christian, it's a yearly thing. Every day is a day of thanksgiving. Every day is a day of thanking God for the birth of His Son. Every day is a day of realizing that without Jesus, where would we be? Every day is very simply that we come into the presence of God and that we don't walk this path alone and we don't walk by ourselves, but we walk with the very presence of God and that God is walking with us hand in hand and today He is Lord of all and He is the Master and He is the King of kings and Lord of lords. It's time for us to let the world know that you may think, well, Christmas is coming gone. They'll sit down and be quiet. No, it's time for the church to stand up and say we proclaim him Lord of Lord and King of Kings. We're going to celebrate his birth. We're going to celebrate his life, not only this day, but every single day of the year, 365 days. We're going to proclaim that he's King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He is the master of this universe. And no matter what it is that I face or what it is that I go through, that God will see me through. Hallelujah. I had planned to get up here this and take a few minutes and just tell you how much we are enjoyed being here, but that can wait. God is here this morning to bless us and to touch us and to help us and to minister to us. And when, when Bishop asked me to preach this morning, God immediately began to give me things to say and begin to speak to my heart. You see, when God's in it, He's already working on us. But I want you to turn with me to Matthew chapter 2, verse 13 through 18. Bishop shared with us last week that Jesus is his name. The week before that about peace in chaos. But you know something? We have that. At the very mention of the name of Jesus, in a troubled storm, there's peace that comes. At the very mention of the name of Jesus, death are raised. At the very mention of the name of Jesus, blinded eyes are caused to see. Lame are made to walk. At the very mention of the name of Jesus, there's victory. And at the very mention of the name of Jesus, the devil has to flee. Oh, his name is Jesus. What I want you to understand is, and, and I'll share some of this in just a little bit, just because Christmas Day is over, it's not a mean that we should come to church and just kind of fall back into a routine or a rut. We need to realize, hey, this needs to be the way it is every day, that we're celebrating Jesus. We're celebrating what he done for me this week, what he's going to do for me the rest of this week and what he's going to do in my life for this next year. Who knows, this may be the year 
why this could be the day that the Lord returns and catches us away and takes us home to glory. This could be the moment we may not make it through this service and we might be shouting around the throne room of God. I think sometimes we forget how blessed we are. We forget how good God is to us. And to know that in the midst of the night or at 11.50 when the phone rings and someone is upset that God can give you peace and you can go back to sleep and you rest. You know why? Because I've got a God that cares about everything about me. Even to the place that he knows the numbers of the hairs on my head. And that's decreasing it seems like. But that's fine. God is good. Look with me with the, the scriptures. And when they had departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt and be there, be thou there until I bring thee word. For Herod will seek to kill or seek the young child to destroy him. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt and was there until the death of Herod, and it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord of the prophets, saying, Out of Egypt I have called my son. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceedingly wrought, and went, sent forth, and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem, and all the coast thereof, from two years old and under, according to the time when he had diligently inquired of the wise men. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet, saying, In Ramah, was there a voice heard, lamentation and weeping, the great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, and would not be comforted because they are not. Let us pray. Father, I come in the name of Jesus. Lord, I come before you, Lord, thanking you. God, for your anointing. God, for your touch. And God, I thank you for this message. God, I ask, Lord, now that you will help me to communicate these words that will touch our hearts and touch our lives. God, that people need to hear and need to know that Christmas isn't just the month of December. God, it's not just one day out of the year. But, oh, Lord, Christmas is a celebration of Christ, the gift that you gave us. God, that lasts eternally. And God, that will continue from now to eternity. And God, that it will touch our lives throughout the year. That in January, Lord, in December of next year, God, in July, in the middle of the summer, God, that all we've got to do is call on the name of Jesus and you are there. For Lord, we praise you and we thank you in Jesus' name. And amen. You can be seated. Don't quit worshiping. God's here to touch our lives. He's got something for us. I'm just the messenger. I'm just the one that God sent to share this. But what I want us to look at this morning is they were sent to Egypt to protect. Sometimes God brings us into situations or brings us to places that we wonder, Lord, why are you sending us there? Or we wonder, why is this happening in my life? And we forget that God is in control of everything around us. And that God is very simply protecting us. We only see what is in front of us. We only see the things that are close by. We kind of look through tunnel vision. I remember one time I was given the opportunity to fly in a plane, a small plane, with someone. And, and we got in that plane, and it wasn't the first time I had flown with them, but on this particular night, we went down to Rock Hill, South Carolina. We climbed in this little plane, and, and it was room for about four people. There was me and one other person, and then the, the one that was the pilot, and the one that was teaching the pilot. I was a brave person. But he had to learn how to land that aircraft in fog. Now, the way they simulate that, you fly through a tunnel. Now, that tunnel is a headpiece that goes over your head, and you can't see anything but the instruments. So he had to learn to fly that plane by instrumentation. 
and he's limited in what he can see. He can't see if there's something in front of him because the fog would be so thick. So he had to learn that. And a lot of times in our life, that's what we see. We, we cannot see beyond what just is right in front of us. And, and we can't vision that. But God knew what Herod was about to do, that he was going to slay the infants that were born within two years that two years and younger, and God knew that this was his son. And it was a time, even though he had come to give his life for us, that we might live and have eternal life, and that the blood would be shed, and that sacrifice would be accepted, and that we could come boldly into the throne room of God to worship and to glorify him and to bless him, that we need to understand that in the midst of all of that, God was doing something real. And so he told Joseph, he said, take and go to Egypt, and you stay there until I take tell you otherwise. Now, a lot of times we would question God. We would ask him, God, why am I having to go to Egypt? Why am I having to do these things? And, but what we need to understand is that God has it in control. And what we've got to understand, why can we celebrate Christmas year round? It's because God has everything in control year round. And God, this what has happened at Christmas, what we celebrated yesterday and what we've celebrated all month long and what we, we have prepared for and we've taken all this time that we need to realize that that it is the reason that we do that is because it's not just for this month it's not just for yesterday but because his name is Jesus because he gives us peace but not just in this month but we have peace that lasteth all eternity that we have peace that passeth all understanding that his name is Jesus because in the midst of the night we can call on the name of the Father we can call on God and we can say oh, bless his name because he has blessed us and because we're living in the blessings of God you see God calls them out of Egypt and I don't know why that God chose Egypt maybe that was the safe place it was a safe place but one thing for sure they came to dwell in a city in verse 23 of Matthew chapter 2 they came to dwell in a city called Nazareth that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophets. He shall be called a Nazarene. But I want to get to this. When the last gift is opened, the last decoration is put away, the last party is over, and Christmas Day and the celebration of Christmas is over. My heart is sad. My wife, she would take down the tree today. I like leaving the tree up. Matter of fact, it wouldn't bother me to leave the tree up all year. I love Christmas. I could listen to Christmas music 365 days a year, all year long. I just love Christmas. But when I was a child, I loved getting gifts. And I enjoyed that. And when Christmas was over and I opened those gifts and I played with them for a while, eventually they got old. They wore out. They, you know, you, we put them away. And by next year, you was looking at what was the next new toy. What was it that I wanted? But I have found that as a growing up, I enjoy giving as much as I do receiving, if not more. I enjoy, I have grandchildren now, and, and I love, I, I, yesterday, I, we, we didn't get to see them because we celebrate Christmas a week early. And so I, I got videos sent to us, and, and I watched those videos, and, and it just thrilled my heart as I watched my middle or next to oldest grandson as he opened his first gift. And he opened that gift, and, and when he opened up that gift, it was a, an amplifier and his dad looked at him and he said that was my first amp and they started asking him do you know what this is for and they gave him a cord and said do you know what this might be for said to put it in the amplifier and he looked and it said it's got high definition or something on it and he said for the headphones and said no not for the headphones his dad reached over and he pulled out a guitar and he or he pulled out a package and he said that's for me and he opened that gift 
And when he opened it up, there was a bright, shiny, red electric guitar. They've already got somebody that's going to teach him how to play that guitar. But to see when he opened that case and he seen that guitar, the light that went off and, and, and his face and how it lit up. You see, every single day of our lives, we're able to get up and say, Jesus, and look and see and God bless us and God help us. And that when we get up in the morning, no matter how bad it may seem, no matter how bad the weather is, no matter what the situation is that we're facing, I get up and Jesus is right there with me. And that the presence of God is right there with me to touch me, to help me, to guide me, and direct me. And that when I get to that point, because God has given me the gift of life, and God has given me the victory, and God has given me the ability to overcome, no matter what the enemy comes at me with, I've got joy in my heart. I've got peace in my soul. No matter what he says to me, I've got to realize that he is the liar and the father of lies. And that when God God touches me and when I call upon him that God is blessing me you see the devil comes at us all the time I shared we were talking in the choir before just a little bit and I was talking with brother Smith and, and as I was talking I told him I said you know the devil uses our passions to, to tear us down and to, to deceive us and he uses those things to, to destroy us when, if we'll direct those passions the way that, that God intends for us to do and that passion becomes toward God and we use the gift that, that and most of the time what we have a passion for is the gift that we have and we need to use that gift and that passion and work for God and then when we begin to do those things and the devil becomes trembling because he's realizing that, wait a minute, they're getting a relationship with God and, and, and that if they realize that if they depend on God and trust in him like that and I can't keep them discouraged and I can't keep them beat down and I can't keep them knocked around, then they're going to walk around in victory, shouting and praising and glorifying God. God gave us the greatest gift at Christmas time that we could ever ask for. There's no reason that the church needs to walk around anemic and, and turn around and thinking, oh, how are we going to make it? We've adopted this philosophy that says, I can, if I can just get by by the skin of my teeth, God never intended for the church to just scrape by. You hear me? I, I want to say that again. God never intended for the church to scrape by. God intended that the church may have victory. And God intended that we may have life and have it more abundantly. You see, God gave us the gift. Yes, cars will wear out. Houses will need repair. Gifts will wear out. Toys break and we outgrow. People, our friends, will forsake us at times. But the gift of life given by God continues to give us not only all year long but eternally. That when the midst of the trial, Jesus is there. In the midst of my struggle, he is there. I, I listened to the song that she was playing just a little bit ago as, we were, as I was making comments before I got started. And what we need to understand is that Jesus, there's just something about that name. If I can say the name of Jesus, that's all that it takes. I, I thought about years ago. Mom and dad were gone to get groceries. They were on their way home. And on Highway 152, going from Rockwell toward China Grove, there's a little intersection there that Faith Road goes off towards Salisbury. Now, I know some of you may not be familiar with that area. But there's a service station that sits there, and it's called Sifford's. It's probably gone now. But they got to a place, and there was, at that intersection... A man pulled out in front of them. A tractor trailer was coming down the other way. There was nowhere for my dad to go, him and mom. And very simply, he said all he could do was say, Lord Jesus, help us, or Jesus, help me. He let go of the steering wheel. I remember him telling this several times, but he said, I let go of the steering wheel. And I said, Jesus, help us. And the, la the next thing he remembered was being come to a stop in a parking lot. And
and right near there. And one man walked over and said, you need to go over there and tell that man a thing or two. But he didn't do that. He just gave God the praise because he knew that it was by the grace of God because everybody that was around said, how in the world did you maneuver that car? It wasn't him maneuvering that car. It was very simply Jesus was maneuvering that car. You see, the song in, in the... Go ahead. I want you... The song in the country realm that says, Jesus, take the wheel. Very simply, we need to understand. We need to do, and I know that's a country song, but we need to do what it says. We need to give Jesus the wheel, and we need to say, Lord, I'll follow you. I'll go where you want me to go. I'll do what you're saying do. And when the devil says, you can't do that, it's impossible. We need to stand back and say, no, you might be right. I can't do it, but there is one that is going to work through me, and there's one that's going to touch me. There's one that's going to use me, and his name is Jesus, and I'm going to depend upon him. And God will see us through. It's Christmas year round. You think, well, how can I do this? The Word of God tells us in Matthew 28 and 20. It says, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always. Amen. The problem is, going back to what I said earlier, we tend to get to the place that when we pack the decorations away, because we tend to pack, that we tend to pack our joy away. We tend to pack our expectations away. We tend to pack our hope and return to the rut of life. Think about this. Our expectations. Let's bring it down to the day. When you come to church, what do you expect? What do you expect when you walk through those doors? Well, since no one's going to answer, I'll answer. When I come through those doors, I expect God to show up. If I'm weighted down with the load of cares of this life and all those things, and I come in and I'm burdened, I expect God to show up. Because when I come into the house of God, the Bible says that he would never leave me nor forsake me, but go with me even unto the end of the world. Again, in another place, he tells me in, in 1 Peter, he says, cast all your cares upon me, for he careth for you. In another place, he tells me, he says that, that, that we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus that loved us. And when I understand those things, I have an expectation that no matter what the situation is, that my God will see me through and that God will take care of me. I'm telling Telling you that God is a miracle working God and sometimes we just don't expect what God wants to give us and we come in and we think I, I don't know how I'm going to make it and we walk out thinking we don't know how we're going to make it. I found out how I'm going to make it. I'm going to bring it to the altar. I'm going to leave it in the hands of God and when I leave it in the hands of God I'm going to shout my way to victory and I'm going to look for the change to happen. I'm going to look for something different to take place. Why? Because God is not known to be a failure. He's known to be successful. He's known that no matter, and you see when I get to that place the devil has to look at it and say we got to do something here because when we get to that place and we have that kind of faith with God he's trembling because he knows that all of heaven is about to react and all of heaven is about to take place. Something's going to happen that God's going to intercede and God's going to touch our lives. You see, we've got to have, if you pray, let me ask you something. When you pray, are you making plans of how you're going to handle this when you get up? Or when you finish praying? Or when you pray, are you expecting it's taken care of? That's it. And he will take care of it if we'll let him. The problem is we pray and we get back up and we take it with us. God says bring it to him. Leave it there. The hymn writer said bring your burdens to the Lord and leave it there. What we need to understand is that when we come to God, we need to have the expectation what I asked of God, well, the Bible tells us that. It said, ask what we will, and it shall be given. Knock, and it shall be opened. Seek, and ye shall find. We need to realize that, wait a minute, God is saying to us that we need to, now, I want you to understand, 
I'm not going to sit here and tell you it's going to be an easy life. I'm not going to sit here and tell you name it, claim it. What I'm going to tell you is that when the devil comes and he throws a trial at you or he throws something that seems to be impossible, then what you need to realize is, but God. There is a God in heaven who loves me and there is a God in heaven who I've turned my life over to and there's not any problem, there's not any mountain, there's not any river, there's not anything that he can't take care of. My oldest sister used to sing a song. An old song, and it says, God, any rivers you think are uncrossable, God, any mountains you cannot tunnel through, and this is what I like, God specializes in things thought impossible, and he will do what no other God can do. You see, Confucius can't do it. Buddha can't do it. All the gods of this world can't do it. But when I call bow on my knees and cry, holy, holy, holy is my God. And I enter into the very holiest of holies of God. And I make my petition known unto him. And God holds out that golden scepter that says, what is it, my child? I'm going to give you favor. I'm going to answer your problem. I'm going to solve your, your battle. I'm going to solve the, what you need and solve that problem and give you what you need. When we get to that place that God you see why the devil is fear so where's your hope without hope you have no expectation and then we just return to the rut you know what a rut is it's a grave with both ends knocked down on it God didn't intend for us to walk in a rut God didn't intend for his church to get by by the skin of their teeth. God intended for us to walk in victory and triumphantly. You see, the thief cometh not but to steal and kill and destroy. And Jesus said, but I am come, or I am come that they might have life, listen to this, and that they might have life and have it more abundantly. God intends for us to come into the house of God. It ought not to be that when we come into God's house that somebody's got to push and pull and push us to, to worship. Uh, and you know, I, what we need to understand is that when we come into God's house uh, and from the first note and even before then, we ought to be able to say, oh, thank you, Jesus. I made it to church today. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, I'm in the presence of God. Thank you, Jesus. I've come to worship the King of glory. Thank you, Lord. I'm here to worship. And when I worship him, I enter into the presence of God. And when I enter into the presence of God and begin to worship him and begin to give him praise, all of heaven descends. The angels encamp round about me. And the devil's sitting here and he's thinking, oh, I can't get to him. I can't bother them. Why? Because our mind is fixed upon the Lord God Almighty. And we're thinking about the blessing we're thinking about the help and we're lifting him up and all the problems and all the difficulties they seem to go away and then we find out that we can walk in that daily and we can worship him daily and we can praise him why because he's king of kings he's given us life more abundantly as a child I started looking forward to Christmas the day after Christmas. Now, understand, I took a break on the 27th. That was my birthday. And my mama, I'm the baby of six. She loved me. I'm the only child that got a gift on Mother's Day. I got a gift on Father's Day from my mama. I got double gifts on Christmas or on my birthday. I just show up and mama said, I've got you a pair of shoes. And I don't know why, but she always tried to make my birthday special. But the day after Christmas, other than that day, I started looking to next Christmas. 
I started preparing for next Christmas. I started getting myself ready for that time. Now you think, well, you were kids. You wanted more gifts. But you know something? That has become a mindset with me even today. Because the day after Christmas, I've realized now that Christmas is every single day. I've realized that Jesus is with me every single moment. And as a child, I started looking forward to Christmas the next year. But as I learned, as I grew older, every day is Christmas for the Christian. Every trial is a preparation for the blessing that God has coming. Every battle is a sign of a new victory that is just ahead. And that every problem is learning a learning experience that God can solve it all. And not only that, but every bump in the road reminds me my hope is built on Jesus Christ and His righteousness. I don't hope in the things of this world. I hope in Jesus because He is my hope. He is my strength. And the song that we sung that said, I'll never forget the day or I'll never forget what God has done for me. I never will forget forget the blessings that God has poured on me and that God has given me. I grew up in a parsonage. I grew up in the house of God. I grew up that, that when I was a child they probably laid me under the pews so I wouldn't be stepped on while somebody was running and shouting and praising God. Let me tell you something. I wouldn't trade it for the world. Some of the things that I've seen and worshiping and glory pine God because it's made me what I am today. It's what I've come to expect. When I come into the house of God, I expect I expect God to show up. I expect the blessing. I expect the spirit to reign full of power and authority. And that if there's somebody sick in the house of God, I expect God to show up and to heal them. I expect God to minister to them. I expect the spirit of God to move in their behalf. That's what I learned. But it's what I live. And I trust in him. This week we got the phone call. My nephew has... COVID. Haven't been around him, but I stopped what we were doing yesterday was when we got the message. I stopped what we were doing, and our daughter was there with us, and Debbie and I said, let's pray. And I took her by the hand, and Danielle, and we began to pray that God would touch him. I waited a little while, and then I called my niece to check on him. And I talked to her again last night. Yesterday, when I talked to her during the day, she said, he's not looking real good. And I talked to her last night, and she said, he's doing okay. He's doing better. You know why? You can argue with me all you want to. Why? Because of the power of God. Because of the power of prayer. I told her, I said, we'll be praying for you. I said, if you need me, you call me. And I'm still praying for him that God would touch and intercede. I'm telling you that when we call on the name of Jesus, God does it. Matthew 7 and 24 through 27, it says, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. The rains descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon the house and it fell not for it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that heareth these things of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon the house and it fell and great was the fall of it. What's that saying to us? What's your foundation? What do you build on? Is it built on the word of God? Is it built on the foundation of Jesus Christ and him crucified? You see, the Bible says to us that if we would lift him up, that he would draw all men unto him. The Bible tells us that if we would look to Jesus in all things, that God would take care of us. If you go to the book of Acts in chapter 1, verse 8, you find there where Jesus ascended, and we find that when he, the heavenly host and said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing into the heavens? For this same Jesus whom you seen go away shall come again in like manner. I'm telling you, I'm looking forward to what's going to happen. You see, just as the patriarchs of old, they look forward to Jesus. I want you to understand that just as Mary and those that sit at the foot of the cross were at a distance, and they were beholding the Lamb 
of God that I'm beholding the Lamb of God and not only am I looking that they look forward to him I'm looking forward now to his return to take me home to glory to rescue me out of this world and to bless and guide and direct me I'm looking for the, that, that blessed hope in Jesus Christ to call the rapture and God's going to catch his church away the only concern I have right now is I want to see people that I know that aren't living like they ought to be I want to see them in the house of God I want to see them on their knees in prayer I want to see them that sitting beside of me on the pew and beside of you on the pew and not only sitting but they can't sit very long because they got to stand up and give God the praise because of what he's done for them and the blessings and what he's done you see we need to understand but those that build their house they hear the word of God and they build on something else it's like building on sand and it's not going to stand but I'm going to build on the solid rock of Jesus Christ that no matter when the devil brings everything and all hell and the gates of hell will not prevail against it because I'm built upon the solid rock of Jesus Christ the gift that God gave me on the first Christmas morning you see Mary wasn't able to give Joseph that brand new black and decker saw but what she gave was the gift of the Son of God that God would save her and that God would touch them. We need to understand every bump in the road. Oh, I must hurry. Y'all don't want me to write my sermons out no more. <laughs> See, when life hands us lemonade, we make lemonade by the help of God's grace. When the problem comes, we just give it to God. The world is sitting there struggling and they, they go down the path of the inevitable. This is what's going to happen because the world tells them that this is what's going to happen. They're going to lose their job. They're going to do these things. You know something? God has blessed me through this pandemic. I figured four weeks in, I'd be sitting at home doing nothing. I sit at home two weeks while I had COVID. And the rest of the time, God has provided. And God has blessed me. And God has helped me. At times when I thought, I, I don't know what's going to happen, something would pop up and God would give me something and bless me and help me. The reason being it might have been a lemon, but God made it refreshing to my soul. You ever had a cold glass of lemonade on a hot summer day with ice? And I'm not talking about a mix. I'm talking about fresh, homemade lemonade. Sometime we do something around here, I'll bring my squeezers. I've got two commercial squeezers or old, they're hand tight, not electric. And I'll mix up some sugar water and we'll have some lemonade. But you see, when God, when the world gives us a lemon, we just make something refreshing out of it. You see, the reason that we do that is because when something is going bad, we go to God. I have a family member I'm praying for dearly. And the devil really fought me. And every time I'd be riding down the road and he'd come at me with that family member and all, and, and I said, this got to stop. I was getting depressed. I was struggling. I'd cry, beat myself up. And I thought, I know what I'm going to do. And every time the devil brought that up and start getting me to dwell on it, I'd start praying for him. And I'd start praying, God, you touch them. God, you get a hold of their heart. 
You see, what happened was, rather than taking that lemon and sucking on it and having a sour look in my face, I started taking that lemon and I started adding a little bit of the presence and the sweetness of God to it. And I started looking at him and God began to touch and, and God's doing things in their life now and God's touching them now. You see, what we've got to do is, and the devil quit bringing that up. Why? Because every time that he done it, I fell to my knees or fell to a place of prayer and called on somebody who could do something about it. I couldn't do a whole lot but God could and it's time that we realize that there's problems that come against us. There's nothing we can do but we can call on the name of God Almighty and we can call on the blessings of God and we can call on Jesus and their prayer has no distance. No matter where they are or what the situation, God sends his angels to intercede and God sends them to touch them and to bless them and convict them. We got to depend on him. God says in John 14, 12 through 14, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me the works that I do, shall he do also. Notice this. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. And I've said this, and it's, it's just saying it in a different way. God never intended for the church to be powerless. God never intended for the church to be dead. But he wants us to be victorious and triumphant. God wants us to have the victory. Why, the church ought to be the place that when people walk in and they've got a problem that maybe sometimes we can't even get through praise and worship and they're in the house of God. And somebody says, well, the preacher won't get to preach. There's nothing that says that we can't have prayer, pray somebody through, and still have preaching and still have the the blessings of God. When we get hungry enough for God, we won't look for reasons to stop the service. We'll look for reasons to continue on. We'll look for reasons to stay in the presence of God and to worship Him because we know that somebody out there is hurting and they need the touch of God. All we got to do, He says, greater things than this shall you do. Think about that. What kind of things did Jesus do? He healed the lepers, raised the dead. The woman with the issue of blood was healed. It goes on. Blind was caused to see, lame to walk, deaf to hear. God's still God. Do you believe that God has not changed? He's still the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He hasn't changed. Let's lift him up. Joseph and Mary went to Egypt. It didn't change that God was God. Whatever the problem is or wherever God leads us, it doesn't change that God is God. He's still God. Sometimes God has to make us take a detour to get us to the place that we need to be. You see, God calls Jeremiah to go down to the potter's house so he could learn the lesson about the potter and the potter's wheel. You see, sometimes when you're on the potter's wheel, if you think about it, you, you're spinning. That piece of pottery is spinning. When we're in the potter's house, when we're in the potter's hand, and he puts us on that wheel and that thing begins to spin, sometimes in the trial we, you get dizzy and you lose your sense of direction. But if we're in the hands of God and he's making us, he'll put us on the right path once he molds us to where he can use us to do what he says do. Peter was sent to Cornelius' house to minister. Elijah went to the widow, and she fed him. You see, God sends us to different places. We have Christmas every day because we have Jesus. We need to live with the expectation something is about to happen, something good is going to take place. The realization, and this is the key, God is in control. Come on to the music. Stand with me. And I want to ask you, is God in control this morning? In your life, is God in control? Or is God just in control on Sunday? 
You see, God's not looking for Sunday Christians. He's looking for Christians seven days a week. That says, God, it's in your hands. I'm going to depend on you. I'm going to trust in you. We look at it and say, look at the politics and stuff of this world. And I don't say a whole lot about politics from the pulpit. But this is what I want you to understand. Let every soul be subject in Romans 13 and 1. Let every soul be subject unto the higher power. For there is no power but God. The powers that be are ordained of God. No matter what they're trying to do. They can't do anything that God doesn't allow them to do. No matter what anybody else does, they can't do anything. When the world looks at you and says, they'll kill you because you're a Christian. And there's some out there wanting to do that. They want to eliminate the Christian faith. But you know something? They can't touch us if we're in the hands of God. God will protect us and God will keep us safe and God will touch our lives. Think about John was put on the Isle of Patmos boiled in a pot of oil. But it wasn't until God was through with him that God took him home. And it won't be till God is through with you. Till he takes you home. And he'll bless you. So this morning, is God in control? Isaiah 54, 17 says, No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. If you've got a need this morning, if you haven't completely surrendered to God, if there's something in your life you haven't given to Him, this altar's open. Come on, church. There's people here that need to be in this altar. God wouldn't have led me to preach this otherwise. I believe that. I'm, I'm just real simple-minded. When it comes to God, if God says do something, He has a purpose. It doesn't matter how simple, it doesn't matter what the situation. God has a purpose. Come on. There's others that need to be here. God's speaking to hearts. God's speaking to your soul. Come and pray with these that have come. Let's give Him the praise. Give Him the honor. Is the Lord
Jesus Christ.